What's up, friends? A question I've gotten increasingly over Alpha 20 is whether it's possible to move a world save you've been playing in single player to a dedicated server. And the answer is, of course, yes. In actuality, when you run a single player session, you're actually running a server, just that it's sort of baked into the game client itself. So you can still invite friends to play with you pretty easily. And that's great. It was not always like this. In the past, each save was even tagged as being a single player versus server. And it couldn't uh, run if you sort of moved a single player to server unless you hex edited a file. This video will be a guide of how to do that with a dedicated server. And as a bonus, I'll even show you how to do this for a hosted server such as Ping Perfect. If you are considering a hosted server for the game, or any other game actually, I warmly recommend Ping Perfect that I partner with and run all my servers. And if you do use my affiliate link and discount code provided in the description below, you'll get a hefty 10% recurring monthly discount. You can't beat that. But before we get into the actual video, I would definitely hope you hit that thumbs up like button to support this video. It's only through your kind support that I can continue making all these gaming videos. And if you want to further support me in the channel, do head over to patreon.com slash video for the two and sign up. With that out of the way, let's go over a few important things. Yes, it's a little bit dry, but it, you have to understand these things to properly appreciate the steps that you're going to be taking. First, what is a generated world? Now, I'm in my local PC, where in the roaming slash seven days to die generated worlds, you have, well, the generated worlds. These are, well, the short of it, a generated world is a template for the world that is being used by a save. And it's one that is generated if you simply start the game or if you go into the world editor and custom generated. The end result is that it draws up all the biomes, where the roads are, the cities, the sites on all the PUIs and other features such as the mountains and lakes. It is not the actual save, but it is linked. The second concept is the actual game save. It's located in pretty much the same place, but in the save directory. and the game save is, is a particular save that captures you playing in the actual generated world, where you explore, what you build, what character you have, complete with the skills and perks, levels, inventory, and all of that. It takes that templated generated world and then describes how you are playing through it. When you visit a new area, it will load in the chunks and region based on the generated world and then save down your adventuring. Maybe you built a small base. Maybe you simply drove through and looted some stuff. How do they interact? Well, each generated world can have many saves using it. You could play one by yourself as a save game and then start a new save game using the same generated world, but play with your friends. They would be separate. They would still use the actual same generated world, meaning the cities would be in the same location, same POIs, all the mountains, lakes, and biomes would be in the identical place. But your playthrough would be independent. They would not be affecting each other. A save, on the other hand, relies on one generated world only. If it cannot find the generated world when it tries to load, it will fail. The third important part is serverconfig.xml. This is where you specify which generated world the server uses and which actual save game it will be using. Clear as mud? Great! The next step is to copy the generated wells folder from your PC to the server. It has to go into the generated wells folder on the server. And if there is no such folder, it means that you've not generated any map there before, which is fine. Just create the folder itself. The structure is important. And on PC, it's general under this PC local disk, which is where we've installed your, have your user and OS and everything. Users, in this case, Vedui, app data, roaming, seven days to die. Some people are saying, oh, I can't find app data. And that's because it's a hidden functionality. You might have to go to view here and then show hidden files, folders, and drives. Otherwise, it might not show up. That's something to keep in mind. But we have to go into generated wells. And the one we're going to look at is roll like Sixu mountains, because that's my generated wells that I will be moving from my single player over to my server. So make sure this one needs to go into the same folder structure on the server. So just copy that over. And this one can be quite large, normally a few hundred megabytes. This is then followed by copying the actual game save to the server. So we're going to go into the saves here and we're looking for Rolex Ixo Mountains, which is the one you want to copy in. And the game name that I have is test. So we're going to copy over this whole folder 
to the server, make sure you get both the Rolex Exo Mountains or equivalent, whatever you've actually generated, and the actual files, because you'll see you have the test, you'll see the player files here, and you'll see inside here you have drones, you have the vehicles, the power and everything, all this is needed to be copied over to the server location. The size of this can vary widely. It really depends on how much you've been playing it, explored, built, and so on. So make sure both the generated worlds has been copied over as well as the saves. And if you're running the server on the same PC as you were playing, well, it's already there naturally. The final step is to edit the server config.xml file, just like you do when you set up any server. And uh, in order to get to that, you generally go to your Steam, you right click, go to local files and browse and it will show up the actual folder where all these things exist. And normally this is under Steam, Steam Apps Common and the 7 Days to Die dedicated server because that's where I installed it. And it's basically the server config.xml that you're editing. Here, you want to scroll down to game world. Again, remember this is the generated world. We're going to put in the Rolex Ixu Mountains and we're going to go game name and this is the save name we're going to put test that's it we're going to then save it and start the server and of course normally you start the server you can go through steam itself or you can just run the star dedicated dot bat and then you simply once it's started up you log in like you do to any server put in your ip and port and you're good to go using your single player save but it's now loaded into a dedicated server now for that bonus help, how does this work on a hosted server? Well, it's essentially the same steps. You do need to FTP and upload the generated worlds as well as the save game. Now, because of the size, you normally can't just do a straight upload. You have to FTP it. And if you don't know how to do that, then do some Googling on FTP or contact your server provider who will normal, normally be able to provide some information of how to FTP onto your game server. They have to go into the correct folders. On the Ping Perfect, you'll see it's under saves. There'll be a generated worlds like you can see here. And we put in, and in my case, this is called Kikibu Mountains. That's the generated worlds that I have. And we do the same thing for the save. Kikibu Mountains, again, is under the save folder. Kikibu Mountains, where you see all the stuff like the player, the region, all those things. Because my save game is called Vedite Apocalypse. So, generated worlds is Kikibu Mountains. The actual save game itself is Vedite Apocalypse, just like it would be on a local dedicated server. Then we go to the server config.xml, and in the case of Ping Perfect, you go down here to the game name. We put in the Kikibu Mountains. Remember, that was the generated worlds. And we put in Vedat Apocalypse because that was the game save name. And that's it. Just save it, start the server. It will load up and you can connect as usual and play. There's a few things to make sure you keep in mind that you type everything correctly. If you mistype things, it will either fail to load or maybe try to just generate something new random because it is confused about what to do. So if you're getting some errors, do check the log files to make sure that things are picking up the correct generated wells, make sure it's picking up the correct save game and make sure both of these folders are in the correct locations so that the server actually can find them. And I always suggest if you are playing with friends, Running a dedicated server, even locally, is more preferable than just running a single player instance that you invite friends. Because it means that if your game client crashes and you are, don't have a server, everyone gets kicked out because the server is baked into the client in that case. If you're running a server, on the other hand, if you have to leave, they can continue playing. Maybe your game client crashes or has some issues that requires you to restart it. If you're running a server, your friends can just continue playing without losing a step and you can just restart the game client and log back in and continue your gameplay as well. And I hope you hit that thumbs up button, like the videos and maybe subscribe and ring that notification bell so you actually get notified for all my new videos that will be coming out. Good luck and have fun! Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the Vedit community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.